every day I get asked questions. Can I make a self-charging car? Can, can I put generators on the wheels? <laughs> All kinds of questions that are like, no, yes, yes, it's possible. No, you wouldn't want to do that. But every once in a while, you get a question that's like, hmm, can that be made? So this is this question. Someone asked, hey, I live in an apartment and I own a Tesla. Is there any way that a portable charging card can be made so that I can just take it out there at night or, you know, when I park it and then you just charge and in the morning, you know, it's charged and then I can, you, know, you can take this card and then plug it into the wall and slowly charge it during the day. And I remember a few years ago getting the same question and going like, yeah, you could do it, but it's too expensive. It's too hard. It wouldn't be easy. So you wouldn't want to do it. But now a few years later, uh, plug and play batteries exist. They're a thing. And you could easily build something like that. It still wouldn't be cheap, but there are multiple ways to do this. And some are will be cheaper than others. But today I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest way to build such a thing. Okay, first you're gonna need a battery, but before the battery, you're gonna need a rack so that you can hold all your batteries together. And this is that rack. These don't ship with any instructions, but these are easy to put together. You get 10 pieces like this, and then you get 10 pieces like that, and they're very easily to tell apart, they're different. And then you get four of the the long pieces that go up and down. All right, so now it's easy to tell which one's the bottom because it's got this big, thick piece of steel that is uh, welded on the bottom, which is what the other ones needed. So let's put it together. Now you start putting those in there. All right, so all of these are screwed on now. The last thing to do, casters right here. So let's do that now. All right, so there it is. The last thing to do is just to put those little nuts in here and then load it up with batteries. One hour later. Bam, here we are. All right, here I rambled on a bunch, about a bunch of things that don't matter. But basically what happens is these are plug and play batteries made by a company called Jacoper. They're 48 volts, right? Uh, fully charged like 54 or something like that. Uh, lithium iron phosphate, super long lasting, super safe chemistry. And they have a built-in BMS with all kinds of communications, all kinds of good stuff in here, right? They're made for these 19 inch rack uh, standard. So you just basically slide them in there, put four bolts, and then you're ready to go. You connect the positives all together and all the negatives all together. Next, after you do that, now we start installing all the other parts. You're gonna need an inverter. This is a 48 volt, six kilowatt inverter. And then we're gonna uh, install the car charger, the EVSC, electric vehicle charging thing. I don't know, whatever that thing is called. So we're gonna install it right here. Okay, so I just connected the uh, wires here. I guess you only need the two hots, right? The black and the red, and then the green right here. And uh, the uh, neutral, well, you don't need the neutral because this is a 240 volt uh, charger, so yeah. All right, just one last thing to be able to make this guy work you have to uh, bond the ground so the green one needs to be connected to the neutral and you have to do that here at the inverter so connect a jumper cable from the green lead to the white lead the ground to the neutral Okay, next we're gonna connect the batteries to the inverter. So let's do that. All 
right, has come the time to fire this guy up. Let's turn this guy on. Button heel. Let's turn this one on. We can turn this thing on now. Boom, now that one is connected to the rest. Menu, 5260, the same voltage, so it's safe to connect them. Now all four batteries are connected together and now are gonna go into the charger over here. Okay, so now the inverter's on. Woo, look at that. The light is white. Let's go try it and let's go see if we can charge that electric car right there. Ooh, it's charging. that we are charging we are charging at six kilowatts six kilowatts uh that's about nine miles per hour according to this have you ever lived or worked at a place that doesn't have an ev charger or even a plug to charge and you wish Man, I wish there was a plug in here because I look like an idiot standing here not knowing what to do. Well, introducing the awesome 20 kilowatt hour super duper portable EV charger. Roll it out and plug it in and you're ready to go. This is the craziest thing, most ridiculous thing I've ever built. And by the way, it was really easy to build. It took me a couple hours to do this, so. But here you guess, on this car, this is about the hungriest EV that you can get. Uh, it's only charging about 10 miles per hour, right? And you only get about an hour per each one of these batteries. So it's good for about 40 miles on this one, right? You could add, a uh, a fifth one in here now you have you know 50 miles of range here of charging but on a tesla like a model 3 for example those cars are way way more efficient and uh, you're looking like 60 miles maybe here you add another one you're looking like at 80 miles of charge just you know on a portable unit like this that you can bring out to your uh, parking lot in your uh, work or maybe if you live in an apartment for example you could bolt this you know you could put some bolts on the ground like epoxy them down and then you can secure it there so that people don't steal it or whatever this is one way there is a, it's, a, it's possible to have a portable charger charge your car in your apartment or at work wherever it is that you park your car for many hours and you're not able to charge right now of course this is the plug and play version this is was really easy to build uh you just pop those things in there you buy all the stuff you pop it in there you put it together boom and then you got something to go this is definitely not the cheapest way next video i will show you what is a budget version of this same thing and you know maybe we can get around the same um around the same specs or around the same performance out of it but for much less money and maybe not maybe it's about the same amount of money and just more work or something i don't know we'll figure it out we'll build the uh diy version of this right all right uh links to all the products i use to build this monstrosity are in the description of this video i want to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one we will discuss the costs in the next one when i show you how to build a budget version of this all right till next one Bye. All right, all right. I'm scratching my head here. 
I don't know how to do this. So these, I'm trying to make a portable charging cart, batteries, inverter, and then uh, a DD charger. Now these EV chargers want to be ground bounded. That means that the ground pin needs to be connected usually to the uh, neutral, right? Because that's what happens in the uh, panel here. See that, that white, that's that's the uh, that's the neutral and the, uh, there's a connector that goes between that and then all the grounds, all the green ones, right? So that's ground bounding. It's only supposed to happen here, nowhere else on the circuit. So this is designed to be connected to that. And so it needs, it wants to see that. But the problem is that this one doesn't have a neutral connection going to it. It's a 240 volt EVSC, right? So it only has three pins and one is the green which is the ground and then the two hots. So how do I bond the ground, right? So you can't, I can't connect it to, here in the inverter, I can't connect the ground to the uh, neutral here because, well, the neutral is not connected to that. So this will never know that it's ground bonded. So then all I can think is that it looks for a signal on the hot leg because I mean neutral is really just a center tap for you know a uh, three pin uh, three pin transformer right and so if you connect the ground to the center tap then you really are also connecting it to the two hots but at a much different like at a different level because it has to go through all the windings and the whole thing so maybe that's what this thing is trying to detect but i don't know how to, i don't know how to simulate that i don't know how to simulate that on a cart that is floating like this without a without a panel basically